So, 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 let's say you want to add a font, a custom font to your website and you want to, you know, use Google fonts, but you don't want to get a letter from some lawyer saying you broke the GDPR restrictions in Germany because you connected to Google to load that freaking font. So you go to Google fonts and you download that font. So you can upload it to your WordPress website and then host it locally so it gets loaded just from there and not from Google servers. How do we get this font now on our WordPress website using Bricks? Well, there's two ways at least and well, there's two ways that I'm going to show you today. And the first one is one that makes you want to swallow a hornet and stick a fork in your eye. And that's the one using the custom fonts tool in Bricks. So if on the website you go to Bricks custom fonts and then you you know follow these instructions here. What you need to do is you add a new font, you give it the name, you know, you want it Advent Pro. Advent Pro, you do this, that's step one, you give it a name. So manage your custom font files. We want to have a normal font weight for it, and we click on it, edit, and there's now I have the option to upload a WAF2 file, a WAF file, and a TTF file for this. Okay, well that's great. Let's see what we just got from Google. Advent Pro. Okay, there's TTF files in here. Okay, I mean TTF is not is not the you know the best way. Okay, there's more TTF files here, static. Okay, we got black, black italic, expanded, extra bold, semi-expanded, ultra expanded. Wait, is there bold, extra expanded? I don't I mean I see italic. I see light, I see medium, regular, semi-bold. Okay, so there's definitely the different ways that this bold here. Okay, so we've got TTF files, we've got a variable font file. I'm not really sure what to do with these. So step one is already, you know, causing us some problems. So let's why don't we why don't we just go to to do Google Web Fonts Helper? You know, everybody knows Google Web Fonts Helper. Obviously, we all do. And it's such a really useful tool to just get the fonts we want. So we go here to Advent Pro. Again, this is still the part where you know you know want to swallow a hornet and stick a fork in your eye. We go select Advent Pro and then you know we select all of these. You know what I'm going to pause. I don't want to torture you with this any more than I have to. And I have to. Okay. So now this is all selected. I go here. I download that Advent Pro V28 Latin.zip. And let's see what's in that zip file. See, see if we get, you know, some some juicy, juicy WAF files. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get them. We get 100, 100 italic, 200, 200 italic. No bold, no. Okay. So we're not getting bold, extra bold, and all that, all that nice stuff. Why would that be? Why would that be? Hmm. <laughs> For some reason, this is, this is only downloading, you know, some files that we need. So I guess we could use the TTFs here so we can get the, the bold and bold italic and expanded stuff. We just get the TTFs from here and then we get the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get the other stuff from the font loader. So we have some off two files. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go to Advent Pro and we just slam those. I guess we use the static. I don't really understand so much about this stuff. But you know, if I read the documentation on Breaks or just this, right, I can see that you know a WAF2 file is Web Open Font Format 2.0 with even better compression. No Internet Explorer. Who cares? WAF file. WAF files have Internet Explorer support. That this is the recommended file type that you want to upload to your you know Bricks custom fonts uploading tool. So technically, what you would now need to do is for 400 normal, you upload those. I guess regular, regular TTF. This this TTF file. But I I kind of really I want that I want that WAF file and I want that WAF2 file. So. You know, it's probably a good idea to find some some web font generator. See, there's probably one. Is there one in my bookmarks? Web font converter. There we go. Converter, right? We can use this one. You know, and then I can just select the file, and then I could, you know, convert that TTF to WAF files, and then I could upload that. You know, so I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to tell you what would need to happen. I think, at least to the best of my knowledge, to really make a proper web font here out of this Advent Pro that we just downloaded. So we're going to have to generate WAF2 files, WAF files, and TTF files for 400 normal, right? We are also going to have to do this for thin, extra light, light normal, and so on. All of these different weights, we're going to have to, you know, generate the files that we need, or see if you know the web font loader thing gave us. Where did they, where did it end up? Yeah, yeah. Like if we can use these WAF2 files for some part of that, then of course we also have italic, right? So we also want to upload the italic version, right? So add font variant, add font variant, add font variant, add nauseum. And then th this is step two to, step one was downloading the, the, the TTFs, right? The, the files, then step two to, I would say 56 would be doing all this. And then, you know, you've got your font implemented. And then step three is you go to Google and you Google psychotherapist near me because while you were doing this, your dog died of starvation and, you know, you're going to need some therapy to just go th deal with the grief. So that's that's the first way to do this, right? Don't swallow that hornet. There is another way to do this and it's called Matthias Altman's Web Fonts Loader. Now, who's Matthias Altman? Matthias Altman is a legendary member of the Oxygen community. And he's also a guy that now has come to the BRICS community to, you know, make people happy there. He doesn't look like this. This is actually just him being aged by AI. But this is the picture that everybody knows of him. I think it's just impressive that he can make webfontloader.altman.de. He can make this, he can create websites, he can, you know, have a business all while still touring. That is amazing. We are now going to use the web font loader to implement the fonts on the same website. And really, literally, the steps are going to be install the snippet, which is dirt easy. I'm going to show you three ways. Upload, well, download the fonts through the loader. Fine, you know, just, just grab the font here. And then step three is upload it via FTP.
All right, all right, all right. Let's put this bad boy on our WordPress website, shall we? First of all, we go to the WebPont loader website. We click on instructions up here, and then we scroll down to the end of that page using in WordPress and Oxygen with the code snippet. And this is the link to the code snippet. So you click on this, you are going to land on a blog post about it. I recommend you read that blog post. It's really interesting. All the way at the bottom is where you find the source code and you click on copy to copy the source code you open a text editor and this is the first way we're going to implement it as a plugin we can just upload it as a plugin to our website so i'm just going to save this on my computer as macustomfonts.php obviously you can name this any way you like and i go to filezilla or any other ftp program that you prefer and you see that we have the php file here now on the server, we go to WP content slash plugins, and you're going to see that, you know, all the plugins that are installed on this website are visible here. And we go in and upload this PHP file just to the root of plugins. It just lands right here. Now we go to the website and we're going to press F5 to see that the MA custom fonts plugin now is available here to activate. I'm not going to activate this yet because I want to show you the magic, what happens on the server. So if I go here to uploads and I, you know, I stay there, I go back here and click on activate. And now what the script has done, it's created, if I press F5 here, a fonts folder for us, right? So this is where we then want to upload our fonts files. Now, this was the first way to put the snippet on our website. There are two more and we're going to look at those now. All right, so we're back to the start, right? Like looking at the uploads folder, there's no fonts folder in here. And on Vivid Yoga on the website in the plugins, we see that uh, MA custom fonts, I have deleted that. So the second way is to just use a code editor like WP code box. And I just make a new snippet and I paste the custom fonts snip it in here and I save it and give it a name ma custom fonts php always on page load yeah and just leave that as default save and enable and now we should be I'm going to press control f5 just to be on the safe side and I press f5 here and I can see again it's done the same thing as before it created our fonts folder and everything is hunky dory now let's reset that as well. So let's get rid of the snippet. I'm going to pause and come back in a moment. All right. So WP code box is back to normal. The snippet is gone. And then if we look at FileZilla, we see that the fonts folder here is gone as well. And of course, it's not in the plugins folder either. We're now going to put it in as part of the child theme, which is a method that I learned from Chris Thompson on the inner circle. He gave me, you know, some ideas here. And I, I think that's a really cool way to do it. So let's look into that. So the first steps of this are pretty much the same as if you're using it as a plugin. So you just put the snippet into a text editor and you save that as custom fonts.php. And then you upload that to your server. And this time you go to WP content themes bricks child you know if you're using the bricks child theme and you're going to upload that file right up here so upload it here here it is and then the next thing we need to do is edit the functions.php of that child theme so we're going to open this here functions.php and we're going to put in uh, an extra line here that chris provides us and it's this one. You can put it at the end. At least I believe we can. Not a PHP master here. I'm just doing as I'm told. Include MA custom fonts. There. Save and then re upload. Over that. And now, if we, we are already here on the child theme, theme file editor, right? I could have done this in the theme file editor in WordPress. Although most good security plugins disallow, you know, doing that. So as soon as your website goes live, you should disallow this using a 
a security plugin. Anyway, functions put .php is here. Include ones, custom fonts .php is down here, right? And we can see that the custom fonts .php, the file, is also now part of the Bricks child theme that we have active on this website. So what I expect to happen now is two things. I'm just going to press Control F5 once more to force reload. First, we are going to find MA custom fonts here, so we can see the script executed correctly. And, you know, we have this here where we can see which fonts are installed, and this is going to become important in a moment. And if we go back to the server, we, you know, go back to the uploads folder, press F5 here to refresh, and we see that the script also created the fonts folder that we want to have, right, with the CSS file in here. And now let's get the fonts that we want. So Rocket. This is the first one. Download. And the second one is called Something in the Way. Something, I thought. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. It's called Shadows into Light. Uh, this one. Something in the Way is a Nirvana song. So beats the hell out of me why I thought of that instead of the actual name of the font. So here are the two fonts on my computer and I'm going to extract here and extract here. And literally all I need to do is take these two folders here, Rocket and Shadows into Light, and just upload it to this fonts folder. To WP Content Uploads Fonts. Just going to put them both here. And now if I go and open Breaks, I'm going to see that these fonts are just available to me for use. Let me go to Settings. Theme styles, typography, body, right? Go to font family, and here it is, rocket. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how easy it is. So I think this is much better than doing it the Bricks native way. It is so convenient, so easy. It's freaking awesome. Now, the best thing is that you can do this not just by using the web font loader, which gives you, you know, complete zip files with all the WAF files and everything scalable and what you need but it, you can also just use any other font. So let's get a custom font from somewhere else. So for instance, we go to webfonts.fonts.net, which of course stands for fucking fonts. And you know, we download, uh, I, I mean, I guess this cafe, right? We go to download, we download that font, right click here, extract here. I'm gonna rename this folder to this cafe. And, you know, if we go in, we see that there's a bunch of images, there's a text file and another text file and example.html. So a bunch of stuff that we don't actually need, but we don't have an SVG, a WAF. We have a TTF somewhere. Do we? I don't know. I mean, I guess so. But, you know, it's all there. And we are, you know, just for shits and giggles, just to show you that whatever you throw at this script, at Matthias's script, is just going to work. We're just going to upload this folder as is with images and what's and all. So refresh here, this cafe, and it's going to upload the whole thing. Oopsie. Right click upload. Bada bing, bada boom. And then on the website, we press Control F5, not on this, Control F5, reload. And we're going to see that it's available. Body. And here, there it is, this cafe dot ttf. And I think we can see immediately that especially seeing with the accessibility laws coming this is by far the best font we could have chosen for the entire website i think it looks fantastic and nothing else needs to be done so that's it why is it called this cafe.ttf it's just because of the the stupid file names that you know we got this cafe.ttf.eot this cafe.ttf.svg so yeah and i'm going to show you the last cool thing about this tool is if we go to appearance and then to ma custom fonts it tells us everything about the fonts we have installed, and that's freaking awesome. I should put this. I should put the this cafe font back just to see what what it tells us here. There, yeah. It so it discovers it as an EOT. It see it says that you know this this font is available as an EOT WAF and SVG file, right? Not WAF two, which is would be the nicest one. And you do want to keep that in mind about font file formats. It's important that WAF2 is, you know, the modern formats that is perfect for the web, while WAF, OTF, TTF, EOT, and SVG are older formats that, yes, you can still use for the web, but they're going to have, you know, there's implications. Like, for instance, the older WAF format can be used for the web, but, you know, larger file sizes, then 
OTF and TTF are formats that were originally meant for desktop use, but they can be used for web, but they do have larger and huge file sizes and then EOT and SVG, some formats that are only supported on specific browsers like Internet Explorer or SVG on Safari. So those wouldn't be a good idea. It's very nice that the custom fonts tool actually explains this down here and you can go even deeper by going to the FAQ page on Matthias's website, right? Where it goes all into history of fonts and the way they've been used. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.